Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mamasal, and we are live on Friday lunchtime, which means we are <laughs> very excited. Um, for those of you who try to get on the other links, I apologize for the gremlins. Sometimes these things happen. The main thing is, you know, I'm going to keep trying until it works. So a big welcome to you all. Hi, Jody. Good to see you. And just to let you know, very exciting today, uh, we're going to make vanilla extract. Now, you're probably wondering why on earth do I want to make vanilla extract now when it is you know, midsummer? Well, the, well, it is midsummer here where I am in southern British Columbia. So uh, I just so that all of you know, there is a really good reason. I've been buying vanilla powder and it's been costing me $16 Canadian for this amount. And I just found out that I really do like to put it into my smoothies, um, you know, with my almond milk. I find it gives it a really great taste. And so I decided, no, I'm not going to spend this much money. Uh, it's too much. I need to be able to do it at a better price. Now, when I start showing you how much all this costs, you're going to go, wow, that's expensive. So remember that we're going to be making more than one bottle, right? And I've done the math for you. Sort of. <laughs> so I hope you'll see that um, that it's a good thing to do. Now, the first thing I did is I bought myself some little bottles. I actually, these are four ounce bottles. They cost me $13 Canadian. And funny enough, I looked up the same ones in American. Uh, they were 20 bucks in American. And they are four ounce or 118 milliliters for those of us who work in that system. Um, basically about half a cup. But I am going to order myself up a new set of bottles half this size. Uh, I'm going to make the uh, vanilla extract in these, but then I'm going to decant it into smaller ones. Now, you're asking me why. Um, I just think that's an awful lot of vanilla extract. And the thing is, and I didn't know this, I wonder if you guys knew this, but when you make really good vanilla extract, which we're going to make, you, if you're using it at home, you can keep topping it up with more booze. <laughs> and when you do, it's the gift that keeps on giving. It, it basically won't run out. So, you know, you can use some and then put some more alcohol on it and then just keep shaking it. And, you know, whenever you use it and it will just keep regenerating. They almost, they say for years. And so, you know, the only time you need new vanilla extract is when you don't taste the vanilla anymore. And so I don't know about you, but that's a pretty cheap way to make vanilla extract. So I'm going to show you what I've got here. How are you there, Isabel? How are things in your neck of the woods? Yeah, it really stretches the vanilla beans. Okay, so I'm going to show you, and please don't get too scared about the individual cost. Remember, what we're doing is we're taking these and we're using them for many, not for, for one. Okay, so the first thing is I bought a dirty great bottle of, okay, let me talk to you here while we're talking stuff. Um, a dirty great bottle of booze. Uh, basically, they say 80% proof. And the way you find that out is just to go where it says, you know, 40% alcohol um, content, but you double that up, that means it's 80% proof. So if you've got 35% alcohol content, it is 70% proof. Does that make sense to everybody? So the higher proof you can get, the better. You can use vodka, you can use bourbon, you can use rum, you can use anything you like. If you've got some uh, extra booze at home that you don't know what to do with, good idea to use it up. So here's what we are going to do. So I got these little bottles. We put them in smaller ones eventually. We're going to need some vanilla beans. <laughs> now, these were a bit of a surprise. I got 12 vanilla beans, and they cost me $36 Canadian. That's pretty expensive stuff, right? That's three, three bucks a piece. So that I, when I looked it up uh, in the American system, uh, the, the same beans in, in the American, on Amazon in America, they were 25 bucks. So they basically, I could have bought cheaper beans, but why? 
if I'm going to make really nice vanilla extract, let me make the best with the best beans. So I got the Madagascar beans. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need a little funnel, <laughs> you know, to, to decant the booze. And then I need a really sharp knife. So that's really all there is to it. Now, just so that you can understand, this turns out, I worked it out, I did the math on it, that by the time I finished, one of these bottles will cost about eight, no, let's call it nine bucks Canadian, or let's call it eight bucks American when I finished. Now, that is for a four ounce bottle of vanilla extract. Two things I want to say to you. Number one is, yes, thank you, Jody. Jody's saying her favorite vanilla extract is $38 for eight ounces right now. Okay. So if you could make it for half the price, would it be worth it to you, Jody? And you could keep topping it up. You see, that's why I'm saying, I know it sounds expensive to start with, but when you realize and you're a really serious baker, Jody. so you know that you probably use quite a bit. Now, you can get cheaper. Um, I, I did a little bit of research, and you can get, you know, Mexican extract um, in big bottles, and it would be cheaper. And quite honestly, if you want to go that way, um, you could also do that. You know, buy it in a big bottle but I don't think it's as good. So your choice. Right, so here we go. First thing I'm going to do is open up. Oh, I don't want to see this. I'm going to open this up with my sharp knife. And I don't have to worry about sealing this package because I'm going to use all of these. And they say to use about two for every four ounces. So um, basically, two to three, let's do three. Right, yeah, let's we'll do it, right? So we'll do three in each. Remember, life is an experiment. So then the next thing you're going to do is, you, the pot comes solid like this. Uh, you don't have to go all the way up, but basically I'm going to cut a line all the way down until almost the end there. Okay, now I have not my, have I got glasses here? Yeah, hang on a second. Just, uh, you know, I'd, I'd hate to get sort of blood going here or something. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can do this. So what they say is just to cut it down the center like that. And what that does is it exposes the bean. Okay. There we go. So I've got the beans all exposed there. And now I'm just going to cut this in half because I need to get it in the bottle. Okay, that's good. Now, remember, I have never done this before. At that price, you're not going anywhere but in the bottle, young man. Okay, so that's one. Yeah. already cut wasn't it yep yeah and this is the third one now you gotta admit that wasn't too difficult any questions so far all right so here we go and now all I have to do is to top the bottle up with the booze <laughs> wrong, wrong. Okay, so 
That wasn't too difficult. So here we have a four ounce bottle of vanilla extract in the making. What they told me in the instructions was just to keep these bottles somewhere where you see them and about twice a week, give them a good shake like this. Right? Think you could do that? The longer that you leave it, the better the quality of the vanilla taste. I'm pretty certain that makes sense. So I am making mine now. And then what I will do is round about October, November, I will decant it into smaller ones. They do say that you can use it, start using it uh, in, in a couple of weeks if you really want to. But, but the longer you leave it, the better the taste is going to be. Uh, they're saying 90 days um, will give you a really good taste. And anything over that will be a really, really good taste. So I'm just going to quickly cut these up. If you have any questions on this, just shout. Uh, so as I said, I worked it out that it would cost, let's say, roughly 10 bucks a bottle, and I'm going to be getting smaller bottles than this, so it'll make probably um, you know, quite a few bottles. Hang on a second. Just want to see how we're doing here. Don't waste the booze, so. That's number two. Now, you've got to admit, this is pretty darn easy, isn't it? Okay. Jamie's just come in, so I'm going to show her Jamie. Oh, I only put one in. So, literally, just cut it down the center to expose the bean, and then I'm going to cut it in half, open it up, and put it in. And we're putting three in each. I might have put too much booze in for this, but we can handle it. I know I've got more than enough booze. Okay, so there we are. Open up. Drop it in. Ooh, that's tight. Wasted some booze on that one. Okay, slippery too now. Sorry, booze there, people. I can smell like an alcoholic. <laughs> All right, so there's, there's the second one. Let's do the third one. Oops. The reason they say not to cut it all the way to the end is because it looks better in the bottle if it sort of still has that sort of shape to it, you know, the villa, vanilla bean shape. There we go, one. Now, I didn't know that you could top up vanilla essence, you see, so I've learned something really interesting with this, and I hope that some of you will be fascinated with that as well. Oh, big waste of booze there. <laughs> oh, it does, it's, it's good disinfectant for the uh, thing. Hi, Jeannie. Well, Jeannie, that's what I thought as well. I, you know, Jeannie's saying, um, I love to use real vanilla. What a great tip. Well, not only that, but I'm going, how many people do you have on your Christmas list that are bakers? Hmm. Or are people that like, uh oh, I missed one bean. Um, or are people that like uh, smoothies. So that's why I thought I would do this. Oh, we're going to waste a bit more booze here, people. There we go. Disinfects everything. <laughs> Always look at the upside, so. Okay. So that's two. Three. And let's do the last one. I don't know about you guys, but this 
actually is a lot easier than I thought it was. I, I was a little bit concerned about the price at the start because, you know, I wear, am aware that we're all on a budget. But, excuse me, but when it worked out that basically it was going to be roughly, you know, 10 bucks a bottle maximum, um, I'm going, that's, you know, that's the sort of price I would think is quite, you know, okay for most people for a Christmas present. And quite honestly, I'm pretty sure that a whole bottle of this will last a lot longer than that at a teaspoon at a time. Oh, yeah, put the booze inside. Just try and try not to flood the whole place. So I've used less than half a bottle to make four lots. So what we're going to do is just shake them up. And remember that keep them somewhere in the kitchen where you're going to see them uh, regularly. And then my suggestion is every time you see them, just shake them up. Okay, let's see if I got any comments here. All right, so Jody's saying, yeah. So Jody is saying that one ounce, this is four ounces, one ounce of even moderately good vanilla, um, you know, costs about five bucks there. So this isn't moderately good vanilla. This is going to be what they call, I think they call it the double something or other. Anyway, so can you see that that wasn't that difficult? How many of you are going... <laughs> Isabel, you can use any liquor. You can use rum, you can use bourbon, you can use anything as long as it's pretty powerful. All right. And so the way to find out how powerful it is, just to remember, if you go to where it says, um, for example, it says here 40% alcohol. So you double that up, which means it is 80% proof. And I would recommend anything over 75% proof and the higher content it is, the better. So, what do you reckon? Was that pretty easy? Mm-hmm. I agree, Jody. This is made with Madagascar beans and 80% proof. So, my sense is, and I'm going to get smaller bottles. Um... Jody, could you do me a favor? I'm sorry to ask you. Could you check how many teaspoons in four ounces? Now, what I liked about it was the little extra thing, which was as you use it, top it up with more booze. Now, I've got <laughs> a lot of booze. Now, I also have you know, some sort of half bottles of booze. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to order up um, probably some more vanilla beans and, and keep making them. Now, what was the other thing I found out about it? Yes. 24 teaspoons in four ounces. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to need to top it up quite a bit then, aren't I? Because I have... You know, uh, or I'm just going to use less than a teaspoon in my in my smoothies. Um, here's another thing I found out that if when you you're going to love this one, you know how I'm going to let this sit for a few months. When I go to decant it into the smaller ones, you're going to love this one, people. Seriously, if I strain the beans out and give my friends, just the pure extract. You know what I can do with the beans that I've strained, don't you? <laughs> you can put those into other bottles and start again. So that means that I can actually buy the price again. And if it takes three months, we're what, August, September, October. Yeah, uh, I can make two lots of this out of the same beans by Christmas. 
That's quite a lot. So yes, Jody, that's what I was trying to do is to show you all that it sounds expensive. But if I make two lots of this out of the same beans and exactly the same, at the moment I've got the price at roughly nine bucks a bottle, I'm going to be able to make that less than five bucks a bottle for premium vanilla beans and the gift that keeps on giving. I will just say to um, you know, if I take the beans out, obviously you can't top it up. Does that make sense to everybody? You can only top it up if the beans are still in there. But what I will probably do when I see what my personal rate, I've quite honestly, I want this for me first. You know, it's my, my Christmas present to me to start with. And then I will, you know, give to others. Now, obviously, if I'm giving to somebody who's a big baker, I would probably give the bigger lot. But we'll see how we go. Uh, I, you know, I, it probably take me a little while just to uh, be able to get more beans, you know, just budget wise. But I thought you guys would probably enjoy seeing that. How, you know, really, how long did it take? The only work I have now is to just, you know, keep. What I'm probably going to do is just keep turning them upside down, you know, when I see them. Okay. That is my first experiment for you. So let me just make sure if you are new to the broadcast, welcome. And if you're watching on the replay, uh, also welcome. Uh, we are Dear Mama Sal, a group of people who get together <laughs> uh, three times a week. We do three broadcasts. We <laughs> do a skills broadcast on Friday lunchtime. And then we do a fun one on Friday evening. And then on Sunday afternoon, we do our Soul Sunday, which is almost a meditation. Um, right. So Jody's saying, how about a tray of vanilla sugar cookies with a bottle of homemade vanilla? Yes, even the vanilla itself is a thoughtful gift. I think so as well, Jody. So there, that's a good... Yeah, you know, there, there is a good thing. And also, what you can do, if it's, you know, if you don't make it until Christmas time, just tell everybody that, you know, leave it for at least this amount of time. But if you leave it for, you know, 90 days, it's going to really have body to it. All right, so we're done with that. Now, let me just make sure that I've got everything going that I want to. Just bear with me a second here. Um I know that a lot of you have been following uh, the stories I've been telling about, you know, be prepared, not scared. All right, so, all right, Niesh is saying this tutorial is a lifesaver for those on a minimal budget. Well, it still cost me quite a bit to start with, Niesh, to be fair. You know, I paid 43 bucks for the booze but I've got enough booze to make an awful lot more. Um, you know, the bottles cost me, let me see what this cost me roughly. Uh, I shelled out 43.80. I, I shelled out close to a hundred bucks to do this. All right, but again, think about it. And I'm now gonna buy smaller bottles. So I will be finding something else to put in these bigger bottles, sorry. Okay, very good. So for those of you who are regulars, um, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate the fact that you come in and talk about these things with me. So here's our first Christmas present. For those of you who want to start, and I've done it now because it needs time to mature. The next thing I want to show you while I've got my apron on is something to do with cooking. And again, I just want to make sure that you know I haven't been practicing this all week to see if I can get it right or whatever. I did, did it once, but that was just out of interest. I like to do these things in a way that you can see even you can do it, all right? And so what I thought I would show you today is if 
if the pandemic gets, you know, a whole lot worse. Huh. Wait one second, people. I don't think I've got my extension cord here. Let me get my extension cord, have I? Okay, this just allows me to cook in front of you, so that's why I just need the extension. Uh, I just want to show you something. Okay. All right, so Yeah, you could do it. Um, the main thing is, Niesha, Niesha's saying, oh, wow, I thought those were recycled the bottles. Before I put the bottles away, let me just show you why I bought these. These have a seal inside them, Niesha, which is why I wanted them. If you're going to use a recycled bottle, I don't have many things in, with bottles this size, though. I would probably put a press and seal over the top and then screw the cap on to make sure that you have got um, you have got that. Judy, I'm glad you like it as a Christmas gift. That's why I thought I would do it, because what I thought I would do is start doing simple Christmas gifts that we can all um, put together. And quite honestly, you know, you might end up just doing little baskets of things for people. All right, and you know, a little bit as Jody says, you know, maybe some vanilla cookies with some vanilla essence, may, you know, and you know, a candle, and you know, just a, just a collection of things, uh, as, and then make it look pretty. What I wanted to do under the category of <laughs> be prepared, not scared, is I wondered how many of you make your own wraps. Do any of you make your own wraps? Because if things got really difficult, and they could, we don't know that they will or they won't, but it, they could. Um, so I thought what I'd show you how incredibly easy it is to make your own wrap. Um, I've just got the crepe maker out because it obviously is a no brainer for, for making a wrap. Um, now I haven't measured, but I got myself some flour, probably about a cup, and that's, Oh, Jody doesn't make her own. Jody, uh, I am going to be making those flaxseed and oat wraps next week, probably. Uh, I already got the. What did I do with it? Just so you can see. Uh, I already got the flaxseed ready, so that I can find out what that's like to make. How, how, how do you like that? All right, but this is the whole thing. Again, have a look at how you can save money. Because not only that, if the only ingredients you have in the house, you know, is flour. I was looking at the Great Depression, the things that people lived on, and I'm not being funny, was flour, beans, and, and meat. Um, so let's have a look. I've just basically got some flour. Now, if you are one of those people that loves to cook by exact measurements, <laughs> look at that. All right, so about a cup I've got in there. Now, I'm going to put in about a cup of water. Well, actually, it is a cup of water. It's not even about. And I have got some, um, what do you call this stuff? <laughs> olive oil, pure virgin olive oil in there. I'm going to put the lid on it and just give it a and I'll show you in a second what sort of consistency I would recommend. Okay. 
This is how I cook <laughs> by the look. So it's going to take about one to two cups of water, but I will show you the consistency. So this is the consistency that you want is like sort of cream. Uh, not, you know, whipping cream when you pour it before you um, do it up. Yep. So here we go. I've got this going. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on here just to warm up. And I'm going to spread that around. And then all I'm going to do, now there may be some lumps in here, but you know, I'm not that fussy. I'm going to put it on there. And... magic spreader tool, one of these. So all I'm going to do is to spread it out. Second one will be a bit better because I'll get to it sooner. Now, so we've got basically a cup of flour, two cups of water here, I would think to be the right measurement. What I want to show you is for a cup of flour, oh, and, and a squidge of uh, virgin olive oil. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the cost of, a, a, of one cup of flour is, but the first one will probably stick with my luck, but that's okay. It's like doing pancakes, right? The first one is always a bear. Should have put a bit more grease on it. <laughs> I'm not worried about this. The way I look at it is this. If I only had flour and water, I could still have wraps. That's the thing that I want to get into your minds. So it's really important in your survival kit if you have enough flour, because that is something that basically will feed you on so many levels uh, in a tough time. If you get, you know, uh, I don't know whether you all are aware how long you could live on just eating pasta with pasta sauce. All right. So, you know, it's like, um, that sometimes some of the cheap things are actually the easiest things to store. No, they're not the same. Okay, they're not the same. Do you want to see what the difference is? Uh, Niesha is saying, glad is the cling wrap also. Yes, there's glad cling wrap. Hang on a second, honey, let me show you so you can see what it looks like. I know where I put it. And I didn't put it there. Oh, I know where I put it. Put it right here. Okay. Uh, basically, this, let me tell you why people like this. Uh, let me show you, Niasha. For those of you who don't know, Niasha lives in Trinidad and Tobago, so she doesn't always have the same things that we have. I think I've managed to lose the end of this. There it is. There we go. Okay, 
So the reason people like this Neasha is because it seals way better than the regular cling wrap. You put this over a glass, Neasha, and you can turn the glass upside down without fear. Um, that the, the, the amount that it sticks is way better than... <laughs> now, you know me well enough to know that I will reuse this. I'll let it dry. <laughs> I have a special place for my reused press and seal. By the way, if I've used it for something, I will just wash it and... Can you see the box again? Yeah, sure. So um, it's called Press and Seal with Grip Tex. That's what you're looking for. It can also insulate a window. I use it for all sorts of different things. I found that it can also uh, what it can also do is, you know, um, if you've got something that's got a draft, you know, there's a, a air leak coming through a window or something. Yeah, you can you can actually seal it with this as well. So I want to while this is cooking, and we're going to be cooking a couple of them. Uh, I just wanted to give you something else that I wanted to talk to you about, <laughs> which is um, two things, actually. No, no problem, Niasha. Um, I don't know if, if you guys know, but I actually... I uh, do make my own panty liners because that saves me a lot of money. And I, you know, if any of you would like to have me show you how to do that, um, I will do it. But one of the things I was thinking about is in your emergency kit, it would be a really good idea to get at least a tube or two of this or something like this, which is speed so. Again, not cheap, but what did I do with the piece that I wanted to show you? Yeah. Um, when I started to make my own uh, reusable panty liners, I wanted to use it, and I thought, I wonder if it washes. You know, how, how well does it wash? Now, I didn't do this very carefully, but over six months ago, I stuck this together like this. <laughs> And I've been throwing it in every wash that I've done, white and dark, for six months. And it's still stuck. So I thought you'd like to know that, that that's how well it sticks. So I would recommend, yeah, Jody, because one of the things, if we hit difficult times, one of the things is, you know, we won't be able to get ourselves new clothes. Can go up a bit higher with this. You know, we won't be able to get new clothes. Um, so we'll need to mend. So my my suggestion for this month is make sure this month that you have your sewing supplies updated. You know, get a packet of needles of all different sizes, make sure you've got a variety of threads. Um, what else, Jody? What else do we need for sewing? So, pins. If you haven't got pins, get some pins because you will need some. Um, maybe a couple of zippers would be a good idea. I would not throw any clothes out that have zippers in them. In other words, you might need those zippers. Now, some of you are saying, I don't need to do that because I've got a sewing machine. Yeah, but what if you didn't have, what if you didn't have electricity? So that's why I'm saying get some of this. Um, 
some buttons, yes, get some buttons. And again, I, I would be very conscious of not throwing out buttons as well. You know, if, if you, you know, it's amazing how they do that. So here we go. This is like, oh, I can do it a bit more. Now, this first one is going to take longer because I didn't have it up high enough. But that's how we learn. And as you know, I like to do these things in real time rather than perfect timing because I want you to see that it's possible to do. Now, um, this is not complicated, right? <laughs> we whipped up a little bit of flour and some water and a li little bit of oil. And what we're going to have is a wrap. Now, you're saying, what if I don't have one of your crepe makers, though? So? Well, you know, you can do this in a fry pan. You can do this on a barbecue. You can do this on a barbecue mat, on a barbecue. So this isn't like that you have to have the perfect equipment. No, that's why I'm saying, Nasha, if you haven't got a machine, I just stuck this. Uh, and by the way, I'm getting a bit better. These are my new ones. They're looking a lot better. Okay. This is stuck, not sewn. What is the metal tool that you're using to lift the wrap? It's not metal. I wouldn't use metal on... The surface, uh, this is a plastic spatula. It's called a spatula. And I just am sorry that I didn't have the heat up enough, but we'll see it as we carry on. All right, so I want you to make sure that we look at sewing things. Jody, anything else that we should think about? <laughs> Jody's saying, I just bought a barbecue mat, and used it last night for the first time. Why did I wait so long? Uh, Jody? I line my toaster oven with a barbecue mat cut up. I have um, inside my grill pan, I have a cut up barbecue mat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, because what I do is I just put them in the dishwasher. It's so much easier than foil. And I got a feeling that it must be healthier than foil, but I could be wrong on that one. The seam ripper. is Yes, I'm saying it'd be a really good idea to buy one of those kits, you know, that has a seam ripper, a thimble, you know, all sorts of, you know, and you can pick them up for next to nothing. But you're going to be really glad. I would also invest in some big needles for mending furniture and stuff. You know what I mean? The, 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 the bigger ones. Or um, some thicker needles for uh, mending socks, you know, because that's what they did. Now, I'm not saying we're going to go there. But I will tell you one thing. If things start to go south, they're going to go south in a hurry. And there will be such a run. You remember the toilet paper thing? <laughs> There will be such a run on stuff that you won't be able to get them. So, and they probably won't be able to replace them. So I'm going, let's get stocked up now. And it doesn't have to take up a lot of space. What you're doing is at least I've got sewing stuff available. Um, did we talk about medicines, Jody? Because it's really important that you think about the fact that you might not be able to get. You might not be able to get uh, a lot of medicines ahead of time. But what I do is, every time I get an order of my medicines, I put one week's worth away. <laughs> yeah, Jody's already said it. Jody's saying she took her barbecue mat and cut it up for her George Foreman grill. <laughs> and you still get the grill marks, right? 
Yeah, we did bring up uh, medicine and stocking up a little at a time. Good. All right. And make sure that you've got the obvious things. You know, have a look and say, you know, do I have enough regular things, over-the-counter things, you know, like ibuprofen and, you know, those sort of things. Have I got enough to last me a year if necessary? Okay, so my first wrap, I think, is just about done. Now, the next one will be much quicker because I've got the heat up. Yeah, Nyesha, um, that is what this is. Just so you know, um, the same thing. Okay, and I will show you uh, next week. Basically, okay, Jody, uh, if you want me to do stuffed burgers, just uh, remind me round about Wednesday next week and we'll put them on the grill next week. All right, so here we go. That's a pretty nice wrap and that took way longer than normal, but that's okay. We're not in any hurry, right? So all I'm going to do for the second one is I put the heat up, not too much, but I put the heat up. I just find butter works better than oil. And I keep my butter in the freezer and just use it like that. All right, so we've got a bit of that. We're going to I put this in water in between so that uh, it's clean when I need it. And now with my wrap here, just going to show you how simple this is. Because I'm pretty sure you're saying, yeah, but what does it taste like? Now, I'm going to be doing a series of wraps. Uh, I'm going to be doing some flaxseed and oat and other ones, just so that you can see they're not that difficult to do and that you can enjoy them. <laughs> I know what I'm looking for. I just don't know where I put it. There. Um, that you can enjoy them and just make them fresh uh, every day if you want to. Let me just read the comments here. Jeannie's saying, funny story, I had to take sewing seventh grade. Everyone was doing lots while I was still making a dishcloth. Teacher disliked my joking. She, which kept me sane. I finally, I finally exasperated. She tied me to the chair. I never said a word, figuring I was the, in the wrong. Wow. Can you imagine what people did in those days? Yes. I, I, you know, I can tell you worse stories than that as well. So I totally relate. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to take some cream cheese and I'm going to spread that on my wrap that I just made. And I'm looking at the cream cheese and going, hmm, you know something? I think I will grab some black pepper. Make it taste really good. Put some black pepper on there. Mm. And then I'm going to put 
take my mandarin and So here we've got some finely chopped cucumber and it's not a perfect round and that's okay people. Don't get all fussed up about that. What I'm trying to remind you of is if you were hungry and all you had was some flour. Could you make yourself wrap? And if the answer is yes, you will not go hungry. <laughs> Isabel's going, <laughs> here we go again. I'm hungry. Well, Isabel, you see how simple it was. Now, as I said, I used a cup of flour, and I've done one. Let's see how many I can make out of a cup of flour while I talk to you. There we are. I don't know why that first one always is a problem. Now, I also don't know, Jody. Um, what would you put between wraps when they're fresh? Would it be wax paper? Hmm. Well, I want to tell you, <laughs> why would I pay money for a wrap? <laughs> when I have the time and the ability to make my own. Now, again, please know that up until this week, I had never made a wrap. You can use parchment paper. Okay, hang on a second, do you need? I think I've got that. Yes, I do. Okay. Parchment paper. Oh, sorry, the English version. <laughs> so, I just because I'm going to make a couple, that's why I just needed to know. Oh. You see a rocket scientist to cut the stuff. Again, I don't know yet. Um, and I'm certain we'll find out with our experiments how long these will last in the fridge. So I wouldn't make too many, of course, depending how many you're making for. But in my case, I probably wouldn't make as many. I'm not going to make more than probably three. And if I have more um, batter left, we'll see. So you can see that that's cooking quite easily. <laughs> okay, Niasha is saying, you know, and this is the whole point, Niasha. You are part of the reason why I'm doing this. Niasha is saying, I've been making crepes and I never knew until I watched the broadcast a few Fridays back. Now I'm learning this, right? So now you can cook crepes and you can cook wraps, right? Well, <laughs> we can, sorry for talking with my mouthful. Um, the only reason, by the way, Niasha, part of the reason I'm not measuring anything is because I want you to know that it doesn't require perfection, right? It doesn't require that you have exactly the right this or the exactly the right that. The way that I like to show people is cooking is... You know, it's great if you've got a sort of mind where you can measure everything perfectly. But don't be afraid to experiment. All the cooking I do you know, is experiment. What else can we put in these plain wraps? 
peanut butter. Um, I don't think I can even get my head in this. Okay, so this one is done. Put a bit of cucumber on it. So I'm just going to put this one on the parchment paper to, to cool. And then I'll put a bit more butter. And you don't have to use butter, you can use you know, whatever you want. And then I try not to, you know, I could make them really big, but I don't need them that big. Oh, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> and definitely don't do it twice. Okay, so I made a boo-boo there, so I'm just going to fill it in. <laughs> you know it's real when there's a mistake, right? You know I didn't pre-record this. All right, so peanut butter and jelly. Sliced apple with cream cheese and cinnamon. Doesn't that sound good? So, quite honestly, not rocket science. Oh, Jeannie's saying, how about strawberry jam, apricot jam? Now, talking about apricots, what did I do with them? Hmm. I know you're going to laugh at me, but this week I had apricots, and they were so good. And what I did was I put them aside and let the pips dry. And last night, I cracked the I cracked the pips carefully, and I now have four apricot seeds, which are going to be my experiment over the winter to see if I can grow an apricot seedling, and then I will plant it up on the big bank behind me. Um, so this is all about, can I, you know, I think that big bank would be a good idea to put um, fruit trees and stuff there. Yeah, Jody's saying maybe tuna as well in a wrap, right? Ham and cheese, wonderful, if you've got that. So... And a great way to use up stuff. That's one of the things I always think of, which is, you know, maybe you had something to eat last night and you've got a little bit of chicken left or a little bit of beef. You know, you can just put... Um, Jody, if you remind me next week, we'll try pita bread as well. All right? Because that can't be that difficult. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's find out if it's that difficult. Yeah. All right, so Jeannie's saying chicken salad with curry powder. Great idea. A little bit of mayo, a little bit of maybe chicken and some celery. And Yeah, great idea. So, again, what we're looking at is if times get tough and we can't get things as easily, then you understand that making a little bit of chicken go a long way will be part of what we need to do. And so... Yeah, that would be um, a really good idea. Jody, uh, correct me where I'm wrong, <laughs> as usual, um, but I have a feeling that a, that a wrap, a plain wrap like this probably isn't more and probably might be even be less, uh, or, uh, you know, Isabel would know as well, uh, less dangerous for those of us who are pre-diabetic or diabetic. Do either of you know that? In other words, you know, what, what is the uh, damage of a wrap versus a slice of bread? Yeah, Jeannie's saying, everybody loves my chicken salad because I use curry powder, mayo, and celery. Yes, very good idea. So this wrap now is, you know, pretty cool, <laughs> literally, and I'm just going to put the parchment paper over it. I do with the parchment paper. That's difficult to say. The parchment paper people. I didn't put it where it's meant to go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that you can see that you don't have to be 
thing on of it to do this. Or, you know, somebody like that. You can actually do this very simply. With, uh, as I said, if you haven't got a crepe maker um, or a tortilla maker, don't, don't think you've got to spend a whole lot of money. You can do this in a hot frying pan. All right, Isabel, uh, I have no doubt that with uh, a little bit of almond flour, it would probably work. What I found is almond flour doesn't stick together as well. So maybe make more of a batter. All right, adding flaxseed will lessen the sugar spike because of the fiber, good. I'm also thinking if you made, um, what about if you made it with uh, chickpeas? If you made the batter with chickpeas rather than flour? And I think that's called a papadon. And that's another one that I would actually, if you can just remind me, Joe, I'll put that on the list as well. Can I make a papadon? Now, the reason that would be interesting to me, and I'd be very happy with it, is because, let me show you. Uh, yeah, I, I eat papadons as a snack. And quite honestly, they, they, they cost an arm and a leg and three bodies. And really all they are, if you look at them, is a mini wrap. Jeannie's saying, I promised our builder I would make his family Italian sandwiches delivered today, sub rolls with baked ham, pepperoni, salami, provolone cheese, uh, provolone cheese, tomato slices, <sighs> kalamata olives, and a touch of shredded pickle. Wow, that sounds beautiful. I am certain they enjoyed it. You're quite the cook. So, I don't claim to be a cook, right? Uh, because me, I play with food. Great. And so to me, this is about not perfection cooking. This is about survival cooking. Can you see that you could do this? And I, you, know, you don't have to be a good cook to be able to do it. You don't have to be uber talented to be able to do it. You just need some flour and some water and a little bit of oil. Or, um, you know, you could even just put butter in it. So I'm gonna put this up even more because I have a feeling this could probably take high heat. It's all part of the experiment. Oh, there you go. Now, if I wanted to keep them fairly soft, which I do, then what I would do is I would cover them so that the steam would keep them soft. Hi, Jamie. So let's do that because obviously if I put the heat up, then they're gonna get crispier. So what about um, tortillas? All right. The main thing is, can you see that it is doable? That's what I want to show you. And if it is doable, and you can see me do it without any talent, then hopefully you guys are a lot more talented than I. That <laughs> I've taken the risk. Will you try one? That's all I'm asking you to do is, could you try one so you know you can do it if you had to? And that is my wish for you. Now, I don't know about you, but there's something really pretty about homemade wraps. And pretty impressive looking about homemade wraps, right? Oh, look at that, it's bubbled up. So yes, pita bread is in our future, Jody. <laughs> It bubbled up like pita bread. Look at it. <laughs> Such fun. So obviously the mixture would need to be a bit thicker, but isn't that amazing? Uh. 
<laughs> homemade wraps, yum. <laughs> so will you try one is all that I'm asking for. All right, Jody's now saying tortillas, pita, papadons, English muffins. I've never made those, all kinds of things, many options, yes. And what I want you to see is if you have to, if you're lucky enough to be able to afford to keep buying them as prices go up, that's great. But I want you to know, wait a minute, if Sal can do it, so can I. So that's, I've eaten one, two, three, okay. See, I think we get about five wraps out of a cup of flour. Now, Jody, how much do you pay for for a, a package of wraps? Got some lumps in here. Don't want the lumps, people. And yeah, so Jodie's saying she's absolutely going to try it. Nyasha, Mama Sal, this is a little off topic, but can roti be made in such a small wrap? I love roti. Uh, it's called panatha. Jodie, make a note, please. You always uh, make a huge piece and it's a mess for you. Quite honestly, you probably are making it too thick. If it's a mess, you probably are making it so that it's too thick. Look how thin these are. Ah, thank you, Jody. Jody's saying that she thinks they will freeze well uh, in with wraps in in the parchment paper. So I can just take these and put them in a plastic bag, is what you're saying, Jody, and huck them into the freezer and pull them out one at a time. So I can make them for the week. Do you guys like it that I'm doing it sort of, um, doing it in the moment rather than perfection? Do you find that more inspiring? Because, you know, I see an awful lot of cooking type stuff, but I don't see many where you're sort of seeing it <laughs> in real time. And especially by people that are just regular people, you know, <laughs> not cooks. So, well, you know why I'm doing it. Now, I've got a wonderful story to tell you. How many of you... Um, this goes under the under the category of um, take a risk. Right? You will remember that when I came here six months ago, one of the things that I really wanted was a, a sense of community. And uh, what I found was that when I when I came here, which was in January, um, and then the furniture arrived in February, and then lockdown happened <laughs> in early March. And so I never really got to meet anybody very much. And I didn't get to socialize with anybody. And here I am six months later. So what I noticed is the people I did talk to, they all said to me, well, you know, we used to get together and we used to do this and we used to do that. But this was way before even the pandemic happened. They had stopped doing it. So I said, why did you stop? Well, you know, the committee that was organizing it. And I'm going, yeah, but you don't need a committee to organize. And I said, if you want to do it, just keep doing it. You know me. And so the funny thing was that um, I talked about it enough that eventually somebody said, let's pick a day. Well, we picked Wednesday this week. And this is the funny thing. <laughs> we invited 17 people, which is just sort of this section of my community here where I live. <laughs> 17 people turned up. 17 people. And by the way, everybody's going, what should I bring? I said, I don't really care. Yeah, bring a chair, bring a, bring a chair, bring a drink, 
and bring appies that you want to eat because everybody's going to bring their own. That way nobody has to sweat about trying to impress anybody. Just bring whatever you want to eat. But some people didn't do that. Some people actually did bring stuff for everybody, which was a really good thing because happy hour was meant to happen at four o'clock. And we thought, you know, if there's anybody left, we'll close it at six. Hmm, not so much people. <laughs> they came at four, literally. At four o'clock, they arrived. And then at 10 o'clock, we had to throw them out of the, we were outside on, on, on somebody's driveway. We, you know, that was covered, you know, in a carport. Uh, we had to throw them out because, you know, the people whose carport we were using were going on vacation the next day and they needed to get to bed. Uh, so they, and there was so much laughter. And you know what made me cry? There was one lady in my community here who apparently keeps to her own a lot, but she came. And I found out that she um, has autoimmune problems. Well, you know, I understand that. And she came and she laughed and she stayed for probably three hours. So, and you could tell she was really enjoying it. And you could tell um, that she so enjoyed it. So, yeah, Jody's saying that roti is also called chapati. I think as well, you know, shall we look at flatbeds as well? What do you think? You know, can we, can, you know, if you had, I'm trying to think is, what if you didn't have electricity and you had to cook something on an open fire? Um, one thing that I'm probably going to invest in, I don't have one, but I'm probably going to invest in a good um, cast iron Pan. Yeah, Jody, I want to tell you, people kept thanking me, and I said it wasn't me. Yeah, it was a group of us that kept talking about it, and eventually we did it. So thank you for thanking me. I mean, I'll, you know, I love it. But, you know, it wasn't just me. You know, we all decided to do it. And by the way, they kept saying, when's the next one? <laughs> but, you know, to hear people laugh, and to hear people, you know, just genuinely interacting again. Now, was it a bit risky? I've got to say that. Was it a bit of a risk? Yeah, of course, because we got 17 people. Did they all keep proper social distancing? No, I'd love to tell you yes, but it wasn't true. But all I know is that I don't think there was a person there that minded taking a bit of a risk. It was just so human for a moment. And, you know, some people came wearing masks and wore their masks most of the time. Absolutely great. Some people didn't wear masks. And it's just like I just held everybody accountable for what they wanted to do. You, know, you are responsible for how you manage yourself, right? So what I do know was I went through um, – <laughs> I, I, I went through two beers. I made, uh, you know, I like Shandy, which is half beer and half seven up. And I went through two cans of beer so and two cans of seven up, which really spiked my sugar levels. <laughs> Got to go, Nia. Okay, it's all right. All the best, honey. Well, you see, Jody, what I do is I listen. And what, you know, just Jody's saying, Sal takes an idea and turns it into real reality. And then it's magical. Um, what, what I said, you know, my sense of humor. Everybody was saying, this was such fun. we got to do it again. And, you know, it's wonderful that everybody came. And I said, yeah, that's before they knew me. <laughs> Maybe not as many people will come the second time. <laughs> ah, it. You know, I could put this up higher, but I'm scared too. Do any of you relate to that? And, of course, this suits me because I'm a multitasker, right? I can talk to you and cook at the same time. <laughs> in fact, I'm in my element when I can do that. So now then, you know, it's a, a great thing to do maybe, um, you know, if you've got that barbecue mat that Jody was talking about, you, you can do this while you're 
having a barbecue as well and have people, you know, just make instant um, reps and have people fill up their own stuff. If you can't afford the, you know, the, the chunks of meat that you used to do. This one's done. Yep. So that one's done. And now we've got one more left in here. <laughs> yeah, the smaller one, owing to the fact I just oops <laughs> Yeah, not as big as the others. You've got a big lump of yaga in there. Get that out. All right, so one cup of flour made, I ate one. This is the fifth one, right? One, two, three, four, and I ate one yolk. So five. So that's, if you want to make more, you need, you know, if you want to make, a dozen, use two cups at least, maybe two and a half. So now we know we can make reps and we can make it very easily. How many of you know that depending what you put in the base mixture, I have been, I noticed that I was adding a lot of black pepper to mine, but you know, it, you could be putting stuff in here. So let's think about what could we put in the wrap. Oh, Jody's saying her low-carb tortillas cost her $5 for eight. <laughs> you going to keep buying them, Jody? Now that you've got your barbecue mat. And the freezer coming. <laughs> now... We do all agree, right, that I am not what you call the world's greatest cook. So therefore, if I can do it, you can do it. Agreed? Now, does it take a little bit of extra time? Yes. So if you are working, I understand why you would buy them. By the way, look how quickly they're cooking now that I got the temperature right. Um, you know, if you are working, I understand that you... Uh, will, you know, want to buy them. But if you're not working, and if you have the ability, you could save yourself a lot of money. Um, you know, I was talking earlier about um, making my own panty liners, and what I realized was how much money I was spending every month, and I was throwing them away. And so to me, you know, um, it was just so easy for me to think, okay, what do I need? And by the way, I also have been playing with, you know, how can I get the extra thickness? How can I get the extra whatever? It is amazing what I've come up with. Now, what I also did was I actually bought online some uh, different sorts of panty liners. And I, each one of them, for different reasons, didn't appeal to me. And so I kept going, well, if I made this, how would I do it differently? <laughs> you know me. And I kept saying that, and eventually I said, why don't I do an experiment? And I did. Um, and now I'm in um, phase two. By the way, I've been using mine for a year, I would think. And to me, it's like, I, you know, why, why would I buy them now? I, I don't need to. And by the way, if times get tough, they won't be available. So it'd be a good idea to know how to do it. All right. <laughs> Only Sal can talk about that while she's cooking. All right. Never mind. And this is... Today is bread, and 
Quite honestly, if you are not making your own bread, then you need to learn, would be my suggestion. I make sourdough because it has less sugar uh, to it. But I would definitely recommend that you, you start learning because it takes a little while to get to know how to do it. And then, a bit like riding a bike, once you know how to do it, you know, you sort of do it pretty instinctively. And what I do is I just make um, this, I, I did this. I haven't kneaded it or done anything. <laughs> I, I do what they call artisan bread. It just you know, does its thing. And <laughs> I you know, pack it in and let it cook. Um, but every now and then, I do something else to it, and I'll show you. Well, Jody's saying, you know, we're blessed that you should take the time to share your knowledge with us, um, helping us improve our quality of life. Well, Jody. I am concerned, as you know, I've been trying to make sure you guys are prepared and not scared. And if you are prepared to cook some things for yourself, even if you're not the world's greatest cook, then you're not going to be as scared, right? If you know you've got a dirty great sack of flour stuck in the freezer, um, you know that you can use scraps of food. If you know that if you wanted to, um, you could buy yourself, you know, a little a little package of what I call survival seeds, you know, that has some peas and some cucumber and lettuce and stuff. And, and you know, you've seen me grow my vegetables and I'm about to start doing that again. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and do a vegetable wall. I, I've bought, I'm waiting for them to arrive, but I've bought, you know, those shoe racks that you put over um, the back of a door, you know, with the pockets in them. And what I want to do is to actually start growing vegetables in that to see if I can create a vegetable garden in the winter. All right, Jody's saying we can thrive, not just survive. Well, I'm trying to show you that, Jody, and you know, I'm glad that you know that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I could just keep this to myself, but why would I? Jamie's saying off topic, but do you all believe in prayer? Yes, even though we don't like Trump, we need God's hand in this to open this man's spiritual eyes to the glory of God and not to his own. Yeah, I want to tell you something, Jody. Um, before he brings down the nation. Yeah, and that I think, quite honestly, uh, Jamie, I've been praying for him to get that for about three years now. And now I'm praying that the American people make the right choice. But I want to tell you, um, I have people that I know that, you know, think we're giving him a hard time. So, you know, it depends what side of the fence you sit, right? Now, would you also agree that we could actually use that as a base for maybe, um, uh, you know, what if we put some tomato on top of that and some cheese? Um, what do you call them, quesadilla? Hi, Joyce, good to see you. All right, so could we make a quesadilla out of this? You know, um, mini pizzas. And now that we've learned how to sun, you know, to dry our tomatoes, the other thing that I am doing now is yeah, every tomato that I cut, I'm taking the seeds out and just drying them. Yeah. I have no idea what that is, Isabel. <laughs> so we made six, six um, very easy wraps. 
and we know that we could have done it on a fry pan. You could do it on a barbecue with a barbecue mat over it. You could do it on an open fire with a grill. That's one thing they also say, by the way. Uh, it's a really not a bad idea to have a grill that could go, a grill type um, thing that could go over an open fire. I actually am quite lucky because my barbecue grill comes out and I could use that if I needed to, if I didn't have electricity. Because my, um, my barbecue runs on electricity, not on propane. Right, so what did you like most about this as an idea? Uh, Jody, I think this is the base for the pita bread, but I could be wrong. We'll try that probably next week. Turkish flatbread with ground meat and vegetable filling is one of the most popular snacks. Yes, slow... Slow cooked fast food in Turkey. Yes, exactly. Right. So I have no idea how to pronounce it. I am Uchen. I am Uchen. Or I am Uchen. I don't know. Somebody will write it phonetically for me. But, you know... Basically, we're talking survival, right? If you had to do it, could you do it? I'm hoping you will never need to, but quite honestly, um, some of you are not going to get more stimulus packages. In which case, you know, your life is going to get a whole lot more difficult in a hurry. Now, the other thing is that... We've got to be really aware is where is the money coming from for all this stimulus stuff? Are they just printing it or are they borrowing it? Does anybody know? Because that's a pretty important thing to, to realize as well. Maybe I should draw that for people. This is not about getting overly political. It's about getting realistic. Um, by the way, I'm going to let that cool down, and then I'm just going to wipe it off. It's so simple. All right, let me get to my whiteboard here. This is just a, a, a really simple reality. Imogen. Hmm. Thank you. All right, here we go. So let's say um, that America has $100 that's running around. Okay. Now, to do the stimulus packages, let's say that they need another hundred. They've got two choices. They can borrow another hundred with interest, okay, which does not affect the value as much of the original hundred. Okay. But if they are printing another hundred, this now is decreased in value by 50%. Because originally there was this amount and they have superficially printed another amount like that. So do you, can you see that the value of this now has gone down 50%? So if you've got, if you have got savings or whatever, the value of your savings will go down. Um, the amount that we can buy, you know, we'll, we'll get massive inflation happening and all sorts of things. And if you think about it, everything will escalate horrifically. 
that, again, be prepared that it could happen. I'm actually, <laughs> as you know, um, hi, Sharon. Uh, I'm actually busy working. Sharon, have you been watching or have you just come in? Just uh, so we can update you quickly. Anybody's plan, Jenny, and Jenny, I want to say anybody who takes this next period on is going to be is going to have to spend billions that they haven't got. It's not just Biden. It's like, you know, if the tooth fairy came in, they're going to need to spend billions. All right. It, quite honestly, the devastation of what's happening to our economy now will, will last my lifetime and maybe the next generation because they will have to go so far in debt just to keep people afloat. And then even then, that might not happen. We might end up in a, a severe depression. Sharon, I'm trying to find out if you saw what we made. And if not, know that we made vanilla extract um, for less than 10 bucks a bottle. And we also made, in case we ever need to know how to do it, uh, I was showing everybody how easy it is to make your own wrap. Now, Jody told me that I can just put these into the freezer if I've got wax paper between them. So I'm going to cut the wax paper a bit. And that way, you will be able to save some for future wraps. Which is a good idea, right? So my question to you guys would be... Um, you know, what is your biggest fear at the moment around this? All right, what 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 do you spend most of your money on? And what I'm trying to do is to find ways that you can live using less money. I hope you can see that. Um, if you have to, you may not choose to, but you may be forced to. And that is really what I'm concerned with. And I personally, um, you know, would like to know that I did my best to, to help you guys with this. Uh, Jody is saying the pandemic caused such a deep devastation in the economy. It really isn't a political party affiliation in any way. Yeah, it, it's got, you know, it doesn't matter who takes over. I hope you can all see that. It, it's not about, you know, if whoever takes over is going to be in severe trouble. So, and... I quite honestly, uh, even if Biden does get in, I don't see him doing two terms. I think that Biden will come in, if that's what happens, he'll come in just to hold the fort until, um, I think the important thing will be, who does he bring in as the vice president? And I think that's where the energy will be, because we definitely are seeing that the 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 world uh, you know, ha does not have an appetite for the same old, same old. And so I think we're going to see a change to younger thinking. And you know, we'll see. Again, I don't want to get too political because I don't want to upset any of you. But again, we need to be prepared. Okay, Jody. so that is made and 
literally no space at all in the freezer. But if you ran out of bread or whatever, So, do you know, it's funny you should say that uh, Jeannie's saying, um, yeah, I think, I think Biden doesn't want two terms. I think he'll, he literally is doing it to, to, to be the stopgap for people. Um, Jeannie's saying that one party is blaming it all on the Republicans. I don't think so. I think, I think that people are blaming Trump not the Republicans. Uh, I've got to say that. They're, they're, you know, it's just like um, the, the, and maybe they're wrong. Maybe he's being brilliant. I don't know. Yeah, so Jody is saying about the wraps, we've made one cup of flour, made five wraps that I can have for lunch every day. Um, no preservatives, no added ingredients that you don't want there. That is the whole thing about making your own stuff. So, you know, Jody, when you said to me you were buying flaxseed and oat, I'm going, I bet that costs a few bob, as they say in England. And I thought, maybe I can learn how to make wraps and show Jody how to do it. <laughs> you know, that was my thinking. <laughs> and so... And I'm pretty certain that this dough uh, will make pita bread, but I'm gonna be working on how to do that. Right, so let's go on. Uh, how much time have we got left? Ooh, no time. All right, <laughs> that went quickly. <laughs> How much time have we got left? None. <laughs> yeah, pitas aren't cheap, right? But, you know, but they're, they're really just bread. Uh, you know, bread rolled out and thrown on. Yeah, actually, Sharon, we uh, I actually did that. I put uh, cream cheese, black pepper, and very finely cut cucumber and rolled it up and ate it so everybody knew. It was tasty. And so what I'm looking at now is how many of you are going, I think I could try that. Right? I think I could do that. I probably wouldn't have tried it. <laughs> um, Isabel, you don't need the crepe machine. You can do this in your fry pan. But what I'm challenging you to do, please, is try it. And if the first one doesn't work very well, remember that mine didn't either. You know, practice so that if you ever needed to make them, you might be able to feed your neighbors on crepes, uh, not on crepes, on, you know, on, on, what are these things called? Wraps, if you needed to. The little wooden spreader. Yes, isn't that awesome, Sharon? Um, I actually bought another couple. What did they do with it? This thing. Yeah, um, I'll make sure that we put it in the link. I bought two more because you and I both know that this is really, <laughs> if you're going to have the crepe machine, you need this. I think this one came with it, but I bought two more online. I, um, I, one of them I want to use with my, my artwork if I ever get that out again. It's like a pancake, Jody. Yes, the first one never turns up. The prettiest, no? And that's why I wanted to do it live. So you know if the first one doesn't work properly, duh, <laughs> neither did mine. But did I still eat it? Did it still hold together? It just was you know, a bit fussy about cooking. So, yeah, I will put up the link to the spreader as well if you don't. Um, do it the other way. <laughs> Sharon says, true, Jody. I hide the first pancake between the pretty ones. <laughs> so, um, we're going to make... Now, did, did we show everybody how to do this already? 
So I don't know. Um, so, but what I want to do is to show you, if you can create this, you can also create pita bread um, and, and, you know, all the other things that we'll, we'll talk about. Jeannie's saying, I add a touch of sugar to my crepes. I actually put sugar on my crepes. Actually, I put a mix of, um, I mix stevia and a little bit of brown sugar up together. Um, so, yeah, uh, that, and I put that over my crepes with some lemon juice. So... Definitely, there. if you don't know how to create the starter, then there are lots of videos about it, and we did do it one time. But what I will do is next week we will work with um, how to take that and turn it into other things. Good. I enjoyed this. Went by very quickly, didn't it? Remember, in your emergency pack, Get yourself uh, your sewing kit. And remember that if you didn't have electricity, you're going to need some things that will stick fabric together. And as I said to you, if you think it doesn't work, I have been washing this scrap that I did not put together very well, and I've been washing it twice a week for six months, and it is still stuck together because I didn't believe that it would work. The other thing I'd like to suggest to you is buy a big thing of silicone or maybe two. I was trying to think what, um, what is the most useful glue? Uh, I would definitely think about that, right? Get, buy, get, make sure your sewing kit is up to date and then start thinking, what is the most useful glue that I use? I personally am now starting to buy extra Gorilla Glue because I find that works really well. Uh, I also um, am now going to start buying extra silicone because not only will that help you know, winterize and stuff like that, but also silicone is the base, I'm pretty sure, of this, right? So maybe if I didn't have this, I could use silicone. I'm going to do a test. You know I'm going to do a test for you guys, right? I'm going to try gluing a piece of fabric like this, but using silicone and see if it holds. Because wouldn't that be interesting? And the reason I want to do that is because the price of this is you know, pretty pricey. But if silicone does the same job, which is what I'm pretty sure this is made of, um, that would be pretty good. The other thing is I'm looking at glue guns, uh, glue, but they do make glue gun glue. glue. That's difficult to say. Glue gun glue. <laughs> say that quickly without the vodka. And, um, you know, I'm pretty sure that that works. But again, um, you know, what if you didn't have electricity? So you've got to think about that. Sharon, this was so simple. You're going to love it. <laughs> Even I could do it. <laughs> and the reps, we made five from one cup of flour. So we're on a real roll here. Thank you all for being here. I appreciated it. I, I'm going to continue to do what I can to help you live on less. And that is really, to me, what I think we're all going to need most. And if any of you have got any suggestions or input on that, um, please let me have it. Uh, you're going to love the vanilla. <laughs> And did you know, this is the thing, Sharon, did you know that once you've made vanilla essence extract, that you can keep topping it up and it basically will last you for years before you need to restart it again? <laughs> that really fascinated me. I, I didn't know that. 
<laughs> so, yeah. All right. So I'm glad that was fun for you all. And we'll see you this evening. <coughs> uh, thank you for your time and your effort. And we are going to, what I'm going to try and do is every week sort of add something that you could make for, you, for yourself or start making for Christmas presents. But I, you know, by the way, I'm going to print little labels. I'm going to get the smaller bottles, but I'm going to print little labels, you know, sells homemade vanilla extract, uh, you know, just so that everybody knows. Very nice gift. That's what I thought, Sharon. And it doesn't matter, you know, if, if it's somebody that bakes, it's a really nice gift. But if it's somebody that likes smoothies, there is nothing like, you know, a little bit of vanilla essence in your smoothie to really change up the taste of that smoothie. So the reason that I did it, Sharon, I was explaining to people was I have been paying 16 bucks Canadian for this powder. And I'm going, <laughs> yeah. I don't think so I can afford to keep doing that. And I do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm completely sold on having vanilla in my smoothies now. It's all Jody's fault. <laughs> and my almond milk with vanilla in it, you know. So it's really, um, yeah, I got spoiled. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, so that's what I said. I'm going to make this because I want it and also so that uh, I, I can afford to keep having it. And you know, uh, how much have I got left here? Um, I could choose what to do with the rest of this bottle. <laughs> I could either drink it or, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking <laughs> I might buy another dozen and just drop them straight in here and put the top back on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, um, why, why not just, it, it would have been a good idea in a way just to open up all 12 pods and just drop them straight into the into here and see how it tastes. Probably do that on the next lot. So I think that would be strong enough now that I've used up that much. I think the next 12 could go straight in there. <laughs> you would be really glad I can't be your president, honey. <laughs> It's the same. It's the same thing as when everybody came to the get together on Wednesday. They're all going, "Thank you, Sol. Thank you so much, Sol. Thank you, thank you." And I'm going, "Guys, I just did what you were all talking about. You just kept talking about you wanted to get together, and I just made sure that it happened. That you know, I didn't do anything very magical. I just told you where to go and what to bring, <laughs> and you came." You see, I didn't make this happen. You did. I could have invited, you know, 17 people and, and two show up, but 17 of you came. So therefore you wanted this and you made it happen because you did it and you had fun because you wanted to. But it was so funny. I, th I thought the funniest thing was, you know, it was just like happy hour is, you know, I thought, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stretch it to from four until yeah, you know, get cleaned up and everything by six and out of there. Right? No, we had to throw out ten people. <laughs> we had to throw out ten people at ten o'clock at night. You know, but I was help making sure that they cleaned everything up so that the that the the people who we were all visiting, um, you know, had a clean driveway. But it was just like we need to go now, people. <laughs> These people have to leave to go on vacation tomorrow. <laughs> We need to clean up their driveway right now. <laughs> this is dear Mama Sal saying thank you for being here. Uh, love you dearly. And thank you for teaching me. You understand that if you, Jody, if you hadn't written to me and told me that you were having those wraps, I'm thinking wraps can't be that difficult to make. So let me see if I can make them because if I can without recipes, right? <laughs> If I can without a recipe, then Jody's going to know she can actually follow a recipe and make superb wraps. And I'm going, I'm pretty sure that I can, you know, make now tortillas and papadons and anything like that, flatbreads, anything like that. <laughs> Sharon says, I can just see her with the two by four aiming for Congress. Hey, Sharon, did you know I've got a book in the Library of Congress? That always amazed me. 
<laughs> Amel, we're just going. Hi, honey. How are you doing? Amel, today we learned how to make vanilla extract and how to make our own crepes. These are just crepes in, in wax, you know, in parchment paper that I'm going to put in the freezer. Okay, say that a different way, Amel. And by the way, Dougie's coming to visit on Saturday. So that's going to be fun. Oh, 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 that, that is a, a religious celebration. Am I correct? I think it, I think that's a religious celebration. Feast, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> Enjoy. All right, everybody, have a super afternoon, and I will see you this evening for some laughs that Jody's put together. And in the meantime, I'm going to take off my uh, cooking apron, clean up my kitchen, and get ready for this evening. All right, we will see you tonight. This is Dear Mama Sol saying thanks for being here, and bye-bye for now.